G'day, I'm Warwick Schiller. I recently released my book, The Principles of Training, and in that book, each chapter is a principle that all good and effective trainers use. And so what I want to do today is talk about one of those principles, which is the application of your aids. And the context I want to talk about it in is teaching a horse to come up beside me on the mounting block. You know, for me, part of the process uh, of training a horse is, you know, you, basically the, the steps from the groundwork to actually riding them is one of the things I'll do is teach them to come up beside me on the mounting block. And another thing I'll have them do is come up beside me on the fence. But today I'm going to be talking about the coming up beside me on the mounting block. And so the application of your aids, uh, the, basically it's about how you ask for things. And what I see a lot of people doing is they use every tool available just to get the thing to happen but you're not actually teaching the horse to respond to lighter and lighter aids. So your, basic, your horse can basically only respond to the lightest first ask you give. And I think what a lot of people do is they are focused on the outcome. So they're focused on trying to get the horse to do the thing instead of teaching the horse to do the thing. And I think there's a huge difference between teaching a horse to do something and getting them to do something. And I think if you get them to do something, you always have to get them to do something. Whereas if you can teach them to do something, it gets easier and easier and easier. And so I'm going to talk about the context of teaching a horse to come up beside me on the mounting block. And so what you don't want to do is apply two aids at once. You know, if you've got two aids you're going to apply, think about which one's the, uh, the least aversive or the one that's the least amount of pressure or the one that's the most subtle you're always going to do that one first and so i'll talk about the process for me teaching a horse to come up beside me on the mounting block the first thing i'm going to do is stand up on the mounting block that's it that's the first thing i'm going to do okay and that and you'll see in this video here in a minute why that's so important then I'm going to wait for a bit. Then the next thing I'm going to do is usually I'll carry like maybe a flag or a little dressage whip or something or other. And what I'm eventually going to do is put it over on the other side of the horse and tap with them and have them come towards me. But that's the actual thing that makes it happen. I'm going to save that for last. Okay. That's, that's the last resort. Even though it's very subtle, it's still the last resort. There's more subtle things than that. So first I'm going to stand on the mounting block. Then I'm going to take that dressage whip and I'm going to pick it up in the air. Okay, the horse is still not coming towards me. And I'm, I'll probably hold it there for three seconds or so. Then I'm going to put it over the other side of the horse without touching him and wait for about three seconds. Then I might start tapping very, very, very softly and I'm going to reward any attempt of that horse to move towards me. Okay, and the... and what ends up happening is in the end you don't have to to tap them with the whip okay in the end you might not even have to reach over the other side in the end you might be able to just stand up in the mounting block and pick your whip up but as you'll see in this little video here sometimes it's even more subtle than that and so this video is of uh, my horse chance and i had taught him how to come up beside me on the mounting block uh, this is last year sometime, and then I gave him about a month off. You know, I hadn't been anywhere near him for a month, and I was about to, to, this session, I was about to start teaching him to come up beside me on the fence, but I wanted to readdress the mounting block and make sure that was still working because I hadn't done it for a month. And if you watch this video, you'll see how important it is that you don't just step up in the mounting block, pick your whip up, put it over the other side and tap them, that you break those things down because you'll see here how subtle it can actually get if you can just, like in this video, just wait just a little bit. So it's been about a month since I really did anything with, with Chance. We've been away at a horse show for a bit and I was away to clinic before that. So just the, uh, so today I'm going to, because he was good with this, you know, we got good with this bucket. I'm going to start working on the fence today, but I just thought I'd show you how he looks today with this bucket. So I'm, notice I get up here and I'm not asking to do anything yet in case that happens right there. I don't, very good little man. So I don't really have to pick the whip up 
What a good little man. Don't really have to pick the whip if I don't want to. So you can see right then, don't get in a hurry to get up here and, and do that, because you might not need to do that. Now, I'm pretty sure that he has got this down so well. I'm going to try something here. <laughs> How's about that? Um, and like I said, he's so smart. So I really haven't done much more than you've seen. I think I'm on, I've videoed almost every session. I probably didn't video the, the, probably the second and third session on this side. Uh, but when I got that good, then I videoed the other side. But I really haven't done much since. But you see that right there. I mean, I could mess around with this and see how... See how far away I could do this from. So I might just walk over here from there. Now, he's not coming. I'm going to wait and see. Oh, maybe he is. Oh, you're going to do it on that side, are you? Maybe I want you over on this side. So I'm going to put his head over there and just pick this up here. Got to go a little bit further, mister. There you go. So notice I didn't just put it over and tap on him. So with a horse like this, they're very easy to train, which means they're very easy to train to do the wrong thing. So yeah. You know, you might be looking at that going, oh my God, he's so cool, that'll be fun. You've got to be very, very careful with one that's this smart that you don't teach them to do the wrong thing. Hey, Chancy. Okay, so I'm going to, I want to start working on the fence today. So you can see in the instance where I took him away from the mounting block, which I'd never done before, when I went and stood up on the mounting block and stood there, nothing happened for a little while. But instead of making it happen, I just stood there and then, oh, yeah, he figured it out. So hopefully that little video gives you an idea about, like I mentioned before, I showed you the video, the difference between getting a horse to do something and teaching a horse to do something. It would be very easy to step up on the mounting block, pick the whip up, bring it over the other side and tap them all at the same time and all, all lumped in together. Whereas if you can break those asks down into separate steps uh, like I showed you there it, it gets to where like you saw when I first got on that mounting block I stepped up there and he just side passed up to me without me even having to apparently apply uh, an ask but if me if I've taught him that me standing on the mounting block is the first part of the ask in the end that's all I'll require. So hopefully that gives you an, a bit more of an idea of the principle of the application of your aids. And if you're interested in the book, you can get it on our website uh, or you can also get it on Amazon.